the things that I find that the people that come to, to these workshops come through election, they're not, they're not coerced, so it's just those, there are people, well, this is an interesting story. In the care home, there were these lovely dear ladies who were in the corner and they were, you know, having these conversations about what was happening in the next room and they didn't like it. They said, well, these discussions should not be had, we should not talk about death, not here. However, there was another wonderful lady who I was very, very moved by, um, very sparkly, beautifully dressed. She had just lost her daughter, and she was in absolutely bit, in an absolute bits, but she said, I want to come to these workshops because I am benefiting from them, and it's helping me, and it's cathartic, and this is important. It's through her and her conversations with all the other residents that chose not to come that many of them came, post that conversation, and they changed their mind. And they were the biggest contributors to the workshops around discussions around loss and grief. Um, so it's changing mindsets, and it is possible. But, so that was wonderful. The one Can I just, I, I can to your point about uh, different communities and fearing or not, not identifying or not wanting to. Um, one thing, and maybe somebody could add here, I'm, I'm quite curious about this idea that um, arts engagement is gendered. One thing that I've experienced in, in the workshops that I have delivered, vast majority have been women. Um, and is it because this attitude that perhaps arts engagement is either for children, um, you know, just for children, and, and, and also a female endeavor? And it was just something that I'm, I'm just putting out there that I've, I found very, very curious. And it's not only in the care home where it was primarily the women elderly residents who are attending, but also in the workshops around the Dying Matters Awareness Week that I conducted with BCP, um, there was one man and the rest were, were all women, of various ages as well. So this is not just unique to a certain age group, but actually across, across the borders. That, that's, that's quite interesting, I thought, anyway. Just, just maybe a stumbling block as well that could be addressed. That's really I think that, that, that's very true. If you just go to Hobbycraft, you see how many how many of the, the range of, of aisles are, this is going to sound very sexist, so I don't, so I apologise. No, 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 but I've, I've, I've started that conversation. How many are no, no, male centric, yeah. you know, there's yeah. half a row of plastic kits and that's it for the yeah. blokes and uh, everything else yeah. is sewing or things that, things that blokes might not necessarily immediately interact with, mm. but you see the you see the success of the male cells on sewing, but, yeah, and that kind of knocks that argument the cops out. But there is, mm. the, there is still that, that gendered mm. attitude in society, I think. Yeah. But also coming back to, to Kevin's point about that fear of failure, I think there's there's also a danger that we've got the um, the, the qualitative, which will be the kind of like the, the arts based activities, and the, the strictly quantitative, which is your scientific research, um, or your subjective versus the objective. Um, and there's a danger that in any research application, you've always got to provide metrics and your feedback, and so you're trying to quantify the unquantifiable in terms of the, how well did the, the arts involvement go. And that, you know, you, there's nothing that's going to guarantee to kill um, a creative process than getting people to know how to question it before and after they've done it. Yeah. Um, and the, but how you get away with that, because again, the Bean Council is into it. If I could just add quickly to the gendering art thing and maybe put a positive spin yeah. on it as being a kind of more female oriented thing, is if, for example, you're going into schools and you've got 50 50 girls and boys. Um, and you've got a female there that has developed a collaboration um, with, with an artist, then you're there as a role model, as a scientist. So I don't know if I'd be standing in front of children as a female scientist mm -hmm. if I didn't use those approaches, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So whilst yeah. it is, there's a kind of yeah. bias there, but equally it can be kind of used as a positive yeah. one, I yeah. think. Yes. And you know, yeah, it's, the girls it, can. And the, it, it's so yeah. amazing for the little girls to yeah. see a, a woman yeah, up yeah. there because they, in one of the schools I was working in, they had a STEM day and they were all dressing up as scientists with their lab coats on and everything else. But it's quite a lot of little kids that had like the, um, the, the moustache beard yeah. 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 and all that sort of thing. And it's, you know, I think it's great to get women into schools talking about science and if they mm, yeah. use arts as a way to do it, then yeah. Yeah. exploit it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.